Hi, and welcome back to another installment from PanicAttackRecovery.com, the home of the free newsletter on Panic Attack Recovery. So what we're going to talk about today is uh, we're going to talk about how you can reverse a panic attack. Um, you're in the middle of a panic attack, your hands are sweaty, your heart is racing, and you're having all of the other symptoms that you have with a panic attack, and you obviously want to uh, alleviate those symptoms. So what we're first going to do is we're going to talk about, you know, in a nutshell, what happens during a panic attack, and at that point we'll then switch gears um, once we're finished talking about that and discuss how you can... Um, use that knowledge to your advantage. So let's just talk about what's going on, um, you know, during a panic attack so that you know, um, you know, you, you know how to use that uh, knowledge and I will show you how to use that knowledge to, to your advantage. So during a panic attack, what is known as the fight or flight response is activated. Um, even though you as an individual aren't in any real danger, um, this response then activates the body's uh, mental and physical survival responses, which of course uh, release uh, chemicals such as adrenaline, noradrenaline, cortisol, etc. I can list various chemicals and things like that, but um, the important thing to note is that it, there is a physiological reaction uh, happening. You know, pupils will dilate, respiration increases, blood, fo blood flow to the brain is reduced. So there are a number of changes happening, and of course that's going to have an impact on your thoughts, because your physiology certainly impacts your thoughts. So um, the fight or flight response is activated, and obviously um, you're having physiological symptoms, and um, your thoughts are becoming impacted by the symptoms. So what happens is um, you will try and um, reason out the panic attack initially um, to try and uh, reassure yourself really that, that nothing is going wrong. But unfortunately you're having these physiological symptoms uh, which of course exacerbate your thoughts and you say well maybe something really is wrong. And then you start going down that road and um, the whole process uh, gets worse and worse. So um, as you can see it's, it's a vicious circle and it's, it's, it's a very tricky uh, circle to be in at the time when you're not having a panic attack and you're not anxious um, it's easy to see it as a cycle but when you're in the middle of the anxiety or um, panic attack obviously it's it's much harder to um, to uh, actually have this knowledge impact you in any way so if you're in the middle of a panic attack knowing that it's a vicious cycle can be um, isn't necessarily that helpful um, but it, it can be helpful once we go the next step which is to look at um, to look at how to reverse uh, the panic attack. So that's what we're going to switch gears and, and discuss at this point. So what we're going to discuss specifically is um, we're going to look at the actions on our part that occur uh, when we're in the middle of a panic attack. So keeping in mind there is a physiological process happening. So we're obviously, um, you know, our heart is probably racing, uh, we may feel dizzy, um, we may feel like we're not even in reality because of various uh, chemicals uh, going in the body. Uh, blood flow is reduced. You're not in a rational mode because if you think about fight or flight, I mean, it, it's a survival instinct. It's a survival reaction. And the most important thing when you're in the middle of a survival situation is your strength so that you can run away from the situation or fight. We have, and it is useful in the right set of circumstances. Uh, for example, if your house were on fire, um, then it would be important to get out as quickly as possible. Um, but in the middle of a rational situation, you know, it's not useful to have that same fight or flight response. So that's what's happening with someone who has a panic attack. They're having this fight or flight response happen, um, you know, when there's really no uh, threat. So what we're going to discuss now is, uh, again, getting back, I'm sorry for digressing there, but we're going to discuss how you can use this information to your, to your advantage. So what we need to do is we need to look at what happens when we're having a panic attack. So it's going to take some willpower on your part. You need to uh, take some notes, uh, document some notes, uh, write down what it is that you do when you have a panic attack. And I'll tell you what I'm talking about. Many people, when they're having a panic attack, will begin to talk faster. Some will talk very loudly. Some will pace back and forth in the room. Some will sit there and, and use gestures with their hands, such as holding their head in their hand, you know, uh, waving their hands in the air. Some people will continually sigh with anxiety, you know, the... <sighs> For some people, that's a very, uh, very good indicator that, that, you know, anxiety is increasing and perhaps a panic attack, if it's a person that has panic attacks. 
Some people will cry. But the important thing is that we all have things we do um, as individuals when we're having a panic attack. And these actions actually are exacerbating the panic attack. But not only are they exacerbating the panic attack, they're also feeding the panic attack. So if you can change these actions, you can actually reverse the panic attack. So the question becomes, we document what we do is we need to think about a, a strategy. Okay, what am I going to do that's the opposite of this? This, is, um, this goes back to um, a behavioral perspective of psychology. Um, that uh, you know you obviously your behavior um, will obviously affect your your physiology and your um, your emotions and that's the premise here is that what you do affects ultimately um, how you think and your emotions how you process things so once you have a, a list of your tendencies when you're in the middle of a panic attack um, you have this information documented so if you're feeling anxious again you begin to feel a panic attack coming on what you need to do at that point is, instead of pacing back and forth, uh, sit still. Now, this the tendency of this w will cause you to feel like um, it will actually cause you to feel like you know it's the opposite of what you want to do. It's the opposite of your instinct at that point in time because you're in a fight or flight situation. You're saying, "I don't want to sit still. I want to keep on the move." And um, if you constantly go to the mirror to look at your pupils or you look at other people's reactions of you to see what how they're reacting don't do that. Um, so for instance put your attention on perhaps a TV program or book. Now obviously if you're in the middle of panic or anxiety your attention span is going to be very limited in what you take into the TV. That's okay. The important thing is to go through the process of looking at the TV or the book. So resisting your tendency to pace back and forth or to do whatever it is that you do during a panic attack. So you're doing the opposite. So you have to really think about, okay, what is the opposite of what I do? Let's look at a couple of more concrete examples because I think it's, it's still theoretical at this point. Let's say that um, when you have a panic attack, you will talk very quickly. So, you know, you're talking very quickly um, to someone else. So the first thing you need to do is slow down. So you would talk slower. Um, so you, you would force yourself to talk slower. Again, your reflex here will be, I need to speed up. But that is your anxiety. Once you slow down, the physiological, uh, the physiological symptoms in your body will begin to, to lessen and decrease. And your racing thoughts will thus decrease because you're, you're taking that part of the cycle out. Uh, what I would also um, use as an example is someone who speaks very loudly, perhaps when they have a panic attack. Perhaps the, the pitch of their voice or the, um, the volume of their voice just simply um, increases. So obviously you would need to speak very quietly um, if you're in the middle of anxiety. So talk very softly. So there are really uh, you know, uh, many different possibilities for people when they're having a panic attack. Um, you know, tendencies that they have in particular. But you need to, let's go through the steps again. You need to um, pay attention to what it is you do when you have an anxiety attack. You know, are you putting your head in your hands? Are you talking quickly? Are you pacing back and forth, etc.? And then you need to um, have that information um, on hand the next time you have a panic attack. And you then need to do the opposite of that activity. But a good idea, after you've documented what it is that you do, you should probably go back and think about things in opposite. So course, again, if you're pacing back and forth, sitting still would be the opposite of that. So that's what you want to do. You want to you want to sit still the next time you have a panic attack. Um, if you talk very loudly, you want to talk very softly, etc., etc. So if you do this over time consistently, you will have a consistent result. For more information on panic attack recovery, recovery from agoraphobia and anxiety, please visit my website at panicattackrecovery.com and sign up for my free and continuous newsletter. Thank you. The material in this newsletter is provided for educational and informational purposes only and is not intended to be a substitute for a psychologist, psychiatrist, or other health care provider's consultation. Please consult a psychologist, psychiatrist, or appropriate health care provider about the applicability of any opinions or recommendations with respect to your own panic attacks, anxiety, and agoraphobia, 
or any other symptom or condition.